Hi guys, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Today we're going to take a look at a couple other um, drafting modifications that we can use on our bodice. We're going to take a look at a button placket and how to do a simple flat collar or a Peter Pan collar, we can call it. So let's head over. The first thing I want to do is obviously open up my bodice sloper so I have something to work with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can add a button placket to the center front of this shirt. Now I want to talk a little bit about button plackets and how they're used. So button plackets, um, in the way that we're going to learn today, are going to be full closures. So they're going to run the whole length of this seam. And that's going to give us an adequate closure to be able to open up the garment put it on and then close it up. So that's obviously the main purpose of our button placket. Now there are slightly different variations to this um, and we'll go over some more of the variations next week but I want to kind of go over just the simple one first. And these would apply to necklines that are fairly flat along the center front line where they intersect. So anything that is more of say a deep V um, or, you know, even a, a, a sort of scoopier neck where it's kind of more shallowly round. Um, you would have to do it in a slightly different way that we'll go over next week. But anything with like a square neckline or just a crew neck like this or a, you know, a scoop that flattens out um, enough at the center front would be perfectly fine to do it this way. And what the button placket is, of course, is it's a little extra piece, um, or a little extension, I should say, um, that allows us to put buttons along the center front. So in every normal button placket, our buttons go along the center front. And what we have to do is we have to extend out our pattern piece first to accommodate the buttons, because of course if we do it now, we'll have half the button on the pattern and we'll have half the button sort of hanging off this way. So we have to extend it enough to accommodate the buttons, but then we have to extend it even more because what happens is when we make the button placket, we fold it and it becomes folded back here and we'll insert a little piece of um, interfacing in it uh, to give it a little bit of stiffness and structure to help us put those button holes or those buttons on. So what we have to do is whenever we're adding the buttons on, we have to imagine adding half of the button placket width here just to extend it out and then another half to fold it out. So let me sort of try to represent this a little bit more visually. So I'm going to just create um, a piece and this is just a demonstration to sort of show you how it works okay all right so let's imagine that this is my button placket it gives me a one inch button placket okay which would be fine for say a half inch diameter button so if we imagine how the button placket is going to sit, it sort of sits like this, right, with the buttons right down the center front line right here. So we can see that half that button placket width is over here on the left side where we already have the pattern piece, we already have it. And then the other half of the button plac placket is extending past the center front here to this edge here. So we already know that we have to extend the button or extend the center front 
one half of the button placket width, okay? Just to accommodate the buttons. But then what we need is another button placket width to be able to fold back. So this would basically be attached here and what we do is we fold this piece back to create a sort of finished backing for the entire button placket. Okay? So what we can see visually is exactly what we need to do to create the button placket. We see that we need to extend the center front one half of the desired button placket width, however wide you want it, and um, add an entire another button placket width in addition so that we can fold it back and finish the back of it. And now this is also, you know, going to be able to give us a casing for that interfacing. Um, and that interfacing is going to give us again a little bit added structure. So, okay, if that's the sort of idea behind it, how do we decide how wide we want our button placket? Well, our button placket is going to be as wide as our buttons, or as wide as we need to accommodate our buttons. So um, I want to go up here to the Add Several Buttons tool. Sorry, I clicked the wrong one first. This is to add only a single button, but this is to add several buttons. And that, of course, is what we want. We want a line of buttons going down our center front to create our button placket. And I can click on this to give ourselves uh, an idea of how wide we need our button placket. Oops, sorry. Again, I forgot to click on the right tool. This is the one I want. And how I'm going to use this is, again, I want to work clockwise around my figure. And we want our button placket to start here at the center front neck and come all the way down here to our hem. So center front waist, right? This will be our full button placket. And now once I click down here, it's going to bring up the buttons property box. And I'm going to play around with it and get what I want. So right now it's saying I only have one button along my button placket line. That's obviously not going to be enough. But the little X is showing me where the button is going to be placed. So automatically it's just putting it in the center here. Now we have a couple options if I want to do, you know, one a little bit above or a little bit below, sort of um, tailing behind the other ones or leading into the other ones. I can add sort of one here. Now I don't often use that. Maybe sometimes there's a little bit of a last button a little bit lower down than the rest of them. Um, but for the most part, you don't have to really worry about this too much unless you really want to do a kind of, um, you know, separated spaced out button patterning. But Mostly we're just going to put all of our buttons in this first section right here. Now going down, this is the also the other um, very important box. And the radius is asking what is the radius of our button. And right now since we're in inches, it's saying that the radius, remember which is half the diameter, which is half the width of the circle that the button is going to be, is going to be 0.2 inches. And that's fine if that's what I want it. But let's try with a slightly bigger one so we can test out different size buttons and different widths of button plackets. So let's make it a fairly large button. Let's make it a full inch in width, which of course, which would make the radius a half an inch. So remember, a radius is half the width of the diameter, half the width of the full button. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now I want to go ahead now and place a number of buttons here. So I know that my overall length of my center front is about 14 and a half inches. So I have to do kind of obviously less than 14. So I have a little bit of space in between each one. So let's do 10 and see how that looks. Okay. So it's spaced out fairly well. Let's hit OK and see if they 
overlap. Now I'm just, I'll just go here. The rest of this stuff is not stuff that you really need to know. Um, so this would be, um, you know, starting, if, if, keeping it within the contour lines um, right here. Don't really worry about that. Um, if you want to give it some special names, you can do that. I don't know why you'd want to name your buttons, but if you did, um, and here this will adjust how they look, but if you keep it at cut, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to hit OK, and there are my buttons. They're not overlapping. They have a fairly good space in between them, so that will work out fine for me. So now that I have my button size, I can go ahead and try to determine what my button placket width needs to be. And what I'll do to do that is simply drag out a guideline and place it where I want my button placket to end. Now we don't want it to end right at the edge of the button. We want to leave at least an eighth to a quarter inch sort of buffer space from the edge of our button to the end of our button placket. So, you know, right actually where the sort of bounding line is for the piece is pretty good, but uh, I'm going to put it right there. Now I, what I want to do is I want to zoom in and test to see how wide this is. First, maybe I'll test to see if I have a good distance between the edge of my button and here. Now it went from the center of my button, so I'll just do it the other way. So, okay, stop doing that. I don't want from the center of my button. Let's just see. Okay, good. That's that's a quarter inch. So I have even a little bit more than a quarter inch, which is good. You know, a bigger button, you want a little bit more kind of, of space. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from my center front to my guideline. Kind of trying to do it nice and straight out to see how wide my button placket is going to be. So that is point seven eight inches. Now I can run that down to point um, seven five because again I have a little bit of extra buffer and the point seven five gives me a nice even three quarters inch for half of my button placket. Okay so what I need to do is and here is the formula, and I'm going to write it out here nice and big. So our formula for center front extension to add a button placket, which is basically just meaning how much do I need to extend the front center front out in order to add a button placket. Um, construction to that center front or any seam that you want to add a, a button placket to. This is not just limited to our center front. We can we can put button placket's anywhere we really want along a straight edge seam, uh, just so long of course uh, that um, it's just that uh, center front is usually where we see it. Okay, so we need the total width of the button placket. And again, this is going to depend on how wide your buttons are. So you might want to add in your buttons first. Okay, just to see. Okay? So I know now that I measured from here to here that half of my button placket width is going to be 0.75. Okay? So that means my total button placket width is going to be an inch and a half, okay? Because I just doubled that. Double three quarters is one and a half. So 0.75 plus 0.75 gives us 1.5, okay? So that's the total width of my button placket, okay? Once I have determined that, I'm going to multiply that number by one and a half, okay? And that is going to accommodate the half that I need to extend the center front just to accommodate the buttons, right? Because here, half of them are on nothing. We don't want that. And also, so that's the half. And the one 
is going to allow us to fold this edge over and use that extra fabric to create a backing for the button placket. So, what I'm going to do is wish this computer had a calculator so I could show you, but anyways, I'm simply going to take my total width of my button placket. Remember we decided that that was 1.5 inches and I'm going to multiply that by 1.5. Okay? So that is going to be, let me do, 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 do. one point five times one point five equals two and a quarter okay now in this formula remember that this one point five is not going to ever change okay the only thing that may change is this because this is dependent on your buttons and how wide you need your button placket to be okay so I know that to make this button placket, I need to extend the center front by uh, two and a quarter. So 2.25 inches, okay? So let's just put that right there. Again, I didn't tie it to this, so it should be okay. So now that I know this, it's time for us to use a new tool. And it's the extend in parallel tool. Now we used a tool very similar to it to create our facings, which is the create parallel. Um, but our extend parallel tool is pretty neat. And it's good if you want to do sort of tiers of things, different layers. Um, you can do a little flared skirt and then just copy paste the pieces and extend in parallel um, to create uh, different lengths. You can also shorten with this. So if you can extend in a positive to make things bigger, or you can extend in a negative to sort of trim down and shorten things and cut off a little bit. But we're gonna extend. So I'm gonna grab my extend in parallel tool and I want to start at my center front neck, click, and then go down here and click again. And I'm going to extend my amount by 2.25, okay? And then there we are. So this is again giving me enough, so I still have my guideline there to show me where the edge of my button placket will be, and then the rest of this again is going to be folded back and create the backing for my button placket. So essentially that's all I need to do, but what is going to be helpful is to add a notch here at my center front just to help me where my buttons are going to be even though I already have my buttons there. And here, I know this is going to be two and a half inches from here, so that'll help me with that. Because that's just what I extended it by. Okay, now I'm also going to want a notch where my button placket needs to be folded over. And luckily I still have my guideline there, so I can just go ahead and use that. But again, it should be about my total button placket width, which there it is. And we know my total button placket width, again, was 1.5. Okie doke. And we can zoom down or scroll down to the hem to do the bottom one as well. Well, do we have the top and bottom ones? Right. And then there we go. So that is all that I really need to do to create the extension. And we'll do another couple examples of that, but I just want to finish this up because there's a couple things, let me just get this out of the way, um, that we need to do to finish it up. So remember how I said that a interfacing piece or an inter interfacing piece is going to be set in here, so we have to create that. So I'm going to go to Piece, New Piece, Create Rectangular Piece. And it's going to be as long as my center front is, my center front length, so it is 14.5 right now, and it's going to be as wide as my button placket, so 1.5 inches, okay? 
and we'll create that and let me just rotate it up so we can layer it over and see what it's doing so again it should pretty much be as wide as the extension past the edge of the button placket and we can see how there it is there's my what my finished button placket will, will kind of look like okay now what I want to do is just sort of add my pattern information and seam allowance just to let you know what it's going to look like. So I'm going to grab my seam allowance and I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do this sort of area that, well maybe I'll do the whole thing. Let's just assume that we're going to get um, the whole thing. And in this instance, let's not forget that I actually do need seam allowance on this extension and that is to attach this piece right here to this. I seam it on and then I sort of fold over the interfacing and I steam it down which gives a nice finished edge here. Then I fold it once more time, uh, once more uh, right here to create the backing and then I stitch on both sides to create the finished button placket. Then of course you add your buttons or button holes. So let's assume we're going to have half an inch all the way around. That's fine for right over here. Now this one, I want to have a seam allowance on just one of the long sides. This is kind of a rare situation where we don't have seam allowance on these edges and they're not on fold lines. So it's a very rare situation, but it's a sort of very specific application that we're getting right here with the button placket. We only really need to seam it once and again that's right here so this edge is going to be seamed here and then folded back to finish and then folded back once again to complete the button placket. Now we of course like any other piece need to name it appropriately so we can say button placket interfacing would be a good name for it and of course like any other piece it does need um, pattern information so that's your style number your size and for this guy we're gonna cut two because of course we have a button placket on the right and the left side interfacing we do not get a self piece out of this contrasting or otherwise it's just interfacing okay it's a little big we're gonna squeeze it to fit boop, boop, boop. there we go and that would be all I need to do to finish my button placket, okay? Now let's start over and do a slightly different size just so we can do a couple of different examples. And this was a fairly large button, so let's do a very small button. So we're going to start the same way with our buttons by adding several buttons starting from the center front neck and working all the way down here. Now we're going to do, this is a, let's do an even smaller one. That would give us a little less than a half an inch button, but let's say I have super tiny buttons where the diameter is maybe only like three eighths, um, which is a very, very tiny button. Again, this is sort of an extreme, but I just wanted to show you a, a, another example. Um, so if it were 3 eighths in diameter, it would be 3 sixteenths in radius. And this is probably going to give us a lot more room to put it on. So let's try 15. Okay. So now again, what I want to do, and let's zoom in a little bit because again, they are a bit smaller and we have some room to zoom in. I want to drag out that guideline to give me an idea of where I want my button placket to end. And again, I might do it a little bit closer, leave a little less distance with smaller buttons I can. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to zoom in really close. Okay, 
that does look good. Again, let's just see a little bit. I wish it wouldn't snap to the middle. But you can just minus the button radius if you want. Let's see how much that is. All right, well, I think it'll be okay. Let's see how wide it is. 0.29, let's round that up to 0.23, or 0.3, um, just because I like a nice round number. So again, if that is half of our button placket, our full button placket will be 0 0.6, right? 0 0.3 plus 0.3 is 0 0.6. So what's our button placket extension going to be? So our button placket is 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 equaling 0 0.6. So what's our formula? We take the button placket width, 0.6 inches, we multiply it by 1.5, and that is going to give us 0.5. Sorry, just give me a minute. 0.9. Okay. So close, close to an inch, but not quite there. So our total extension is going to be 0.9, right? So remember, this is the number that can change depending on how big your buttons are, but this 1.5 never changes. So our total extension is going to be 0.9. Alrighty, makes sense. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's go to our Extend in Parallel tool. Extend it out by 0.9 this time. Okay, and there's our extension. Let's go ahead and put in our notches. This one we already have right there, how handy dandy. Here, I know it needs to be 0.9, right? Because that was the amount we extended the center front by. And since we have our lovely guidelines still there, we can use those or we can just remember how much our button placket should be, which again was 0.6. So I'm looking at this from being about 0.6 from the edge, pretty close. And we'll scroll down and do the bottom, add the bottom one too. Okay, and now we can add our interfacing. Same length, again, because our center front hasn't changed, but our width has changed because it's become much smaller. And then there we are, our extension and interfacing piece that will make up our button placket construction. Okay, so there we are. Oh, I'm sorry, that should have been 0.6. I'm so sorry. So, again, always double check. <laughs> oh, but you know what? You know what I can do? Let me show you the uh, trim off section. So I made it 0.3 inches too big. So let's just extend by negative 0.3. And then there we go. We trimmed it off. And that should be enough for my full button placket width. Because right, our interfacing piece should be the button placket width. And then we add seam allowance accordingly, just like I showed you in the first one. Okay, so um, again, we'll do a few other button placket variations next week, but this is your basic one. And remember, just remember the formula, because that's really all you need. And the other thing I want to show you today is just how to do a simple uh, flat collar, uh, Peter Pan collar, so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do, let me zoom out a little bit. And what we're going to do is to draft this, I want to get my full neckline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this piece so our beginning shoulder lines 
are matched up. Now I can use the rotate piece tool to do this, or I can use the join piece tool. And this is going to show you another little bit of a function with the join piece tool. Okay, that's not where I want it because it's showing neckline to neckline. I want shoulder line to shoulder line. So I'm going to change the direction. And I think that's going to work. I don't know. Kind of weird for me to see. I guess we'll just have to try it out. Um, but I want to click move pieces alongside only. Now this isn't going to join them into one piece. It's just going to align our shoulder seams together. Yep, that's what I wanted. So now we have that full neckline all the way here. And I'm going to zoom in on that. So there's our nice neckline, nice and continuous. So what I want to do is I want to select both pieces and protect them. Because we're going to be drafting on top of it and we want a separate piece, so I don't want anything attached to here. Now making a flat collar is fairly simple from here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the draft tool and I'm simply going to draft the shape of the collar that I want. So let's do a very simple sort of just little flat collar. Now I'm going to start from the center front, not from the, where the button placket ends or the edge of it, and certainly not here, because remember this is going to be folded back. And um, we really, you know, when we have this button together, we want the collar to meet at the center front to sort of have a little point right at the center front. So I want to start my collar at the center front. Now this will change uh, depending on what collar type you're doing, but for this type of collar we want to start it at the center front. We don't want to go any past uh, that center front point. So I'm just going to click that. I never want to remove my protection when I'm drafting over a piece. And the first step I'm going to do is just to copy the neckline as is. Just going over the points of my neckline just as they are, okay? Now from here, I want to go down as deep as I want my button placket. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my collar. Um, and I want to follow that center black back line. So let's say I want it to be two inches. Here I can, if I need that measurement, I can hold down the Alt key and measure from my last point. And, ooh, I was close type in my two inches. Remember we're going down, not up, so it's going to be a negative number. Nope. Okay, now from here, your collar is really just, it's a piece attached to your neckline. Um, it has nothing really to do with construction, doesn't really add anything, it doesn't add anything to fit or anything, it doesn't affect it in any way. So you can pretty much make whatever shape you want. Um, I'm going to make a standard, uh, again, sort of little um, flat collar shape, but if you wanted to make it scalloped or zigzagged or some sort of weird shape, that's up to you. You're the designer. Um, but I am going to shift, just sort of curve it around, make it kind of even. And again, I can adjust this line to my heart's content because it's not really going to be seamed to anything. And then let's corner it off here, something like that. So like I said, if you want to go back and adjust this line, you sure, certainly can with your move point tool. It really has no matter. You can make it any shape that you want. The only thing to really consider is um, its width, and I'll get that to that in a minute. So um, let's take this off and look at it as a separate piece. So here's your collar piece, and what I want to do just to finish it off is to align my grain with the center back, because most of the time what we're going to do is we're going to just have one collar piece, and it's going to be on fold along your center back line. So this will be on fold. Of course, let's finish it off nicely, so this will be collar, and let's add some seam allowance everywhere but my center back. And I'm going to add a slightly smaller seam allowance and make sure that my corners are minored so they're nice and sharp. See, I only added about a quarter of an inch here. Now with collars and things like that, we tend to do a slightly smaller seam allowance. It reduces the bulk and makes us, uh, allows us to clean a little, uh, finish a little bit easier. Now let's do our text. Again, style number, 
as always, size as always, and we're going to cut to self. Even though this is going to be on fold, we need two layers of the collar in order to properly finish the neckline. So collar pieces are almost always cut to self. And we're going to cut either one or two pieces of interfacing with this. Now that really, again, d depends on how stiff you want your collar and what kind of fabric you're working with. So I'm going to do two interfacing. And there we go. There's my finished collar piece. Okay. Now I want to show you something else. Let's say I wanted to do a slightly wider collar. There's a one more uh, of a little bit um, of something you might want to consider. So let's do sort of the same collar, but wider. So it's going to go over the shoulder, a little down a little farther, over the shoulder a little bit more. Now in this instance, since it's longer, it is going to go over more of the shoulder. And in that instance, you might have to go ahead and um, do a little slash and spread so it doesn't bunch itself up over the shoulder. So see how long this is, or I'm sorry, how wide this is. Then let's sort of kind of, okay. Well, we didn't corner, it doesn't look like I said, doesn't matter. So this is very, very wide. And if I don't do this subsequent step, what's gonna happen is it's gonna have a little trouble going over the hump of the shoulder. It's gonna kind of pull and bunch a little bit. So to avoid that, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take out my finished collar piece and I'm going to cut it in about thirds, keeping the cut lines perpendicular to the contour lines. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to ever so slightly rotate out. I wanna keep the neckline together. This, I don't want it any bigger because of course it needs to fit into here. But I'm just gonna rotate out so I get a little bit of space here at the outer edge. And we're just gonna do it wee, uh, just a wee bit and if a wee bit is not precise enough for you, uh, we're going to try when I meet this back here to open it up so this is gonna be about an eighth of an inch. Um, it's actually kind of wide, so it might even be better to keep it more at a, a quarter of an inch. So again, I wanna make sure that these are really touching. I don't wanna make my neckline any bigger Fine, make me zoom in all the way. And then I can grab my measure tool to see how big this is. And again, I'm looking for this to be, you know, between an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And since it was so big, I do want it to be a little bit closer to a quarter of an inch. So that's perfect. Now I'm gonna do the other one as well. So let's zoom out a little bit. try to eyeball that shape, see how close I can get. All right, let's measure that width. Haha, perfect. Okay, now that we have a little bit of extra fullness, a little ease, that's gonna allow this to fall over the shoulder, a little bit easier, a little bit nicer. So what I want to do to fin make the finished draft is I'm going to go ahead and protect all of these little pieces. It's a lot like the flared skirt, right? We're just not flaring it out quite so much. We don't want to make a flare. We just want to create a little bit of ease for over the shoulder. No, I don't want to remove that protection. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this based on my draft. Boop. And 
there we are. And then of course we align the grain with the center back and outer seam allowance and all that other good stuff. Okay, and that's how we make a flat collar. And really just to sort of, um, you know, I, I know I mentioned it, but this, this shape can be anything you want. Um, and again, once you've made it, feel free to go ahead and adjust the outer edge because the outer edge really is, it's just whatever you want it to be. So if you want a color that looks like this, if you know, it's kind of clowny, um, but if you do, and of course, if you want a little help adjusting the shape, you can add points to it. It'll help you refine what it looks like. So if you wanted this to be your collar, that's your collar, you know, perfectly fine. Um, if you wanted to, you know, make it jaggedy, uh, go ahead and do it. Um, any shape that you want is perfectly fine. The, these collar pieces are really, they're just, they're, they're, um, the only reason they're there is for style and design. So if you want to get creative and alternative with it, that's perfectly fine. That's your right as a designer, right? So um, just a little video on how to do uh, button plackets and collars. And then, of course, next week we're going to expand on this in, in addition to um, add some other uh, little manipulation techniques. Because, of course, there's many other different styles of collars and other different styles of button plackets as well. But this is just going to start us off and prepare us for the assignment for this week, which is, is of course, our next video, which is the shirt draft, which features a full draft with a button placket. Uh, some seam manipulation, and a simple flat collar or Peter Pan collar. All right, guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, let me log off. Bye-bye, guys.